Okay, students, welcome to part three of lesson 72, cash flow statements. Remember I said to you, when we do a cash flow statement, we need, we're going to work with information from the income statement, like here, the income statement. Or if we don't have an income statement, they will give you the information that is needed from the income statement. The other thing that we're going to work with is the balance sheet, which is this one. You see balance sheet. Okay, and what is also important is that you must realize that we are going to work with two consecutive years because we are going to, remember, we work with the cash inflow and outflow of cash during a specific, specific financial period. So we're going, to, we're going to compare the previous year with this year. This 2001 was the end of our current financial year and 2020. Zero was the end of the previous financial year. Okay, so the second thing that we're going to work with is the balance sheet. And the third item that we're going to work with is the notes to the financial statements. In other words, notes to the balance sheet or to the income statement. All right. Okay. This is the notes. This is still notes. This is also part of the notes. Okay. So the very first part of the cash flow statement is the cash effects of operating activities. All right. And how are we going to calculate the cash effects of operating activities? We need to work with, with the cash received from customers and cash paid to suppliers. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work through this and explain to you or show you where I got each and every one of these figures where we got that from either the income statement or from the balance sheet. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is to work out what was the cash received from customers. Okay, we said we're going to take the sales amount. Remember I said to you this amount includes the credit sales as well as the cash sales. We get this amount from our income statement. Okay, let's go back to the income statement. Here is the income statement, okay? So this is the 700,000 where we get that amount from. You see 700,000, 700,000 cash for, for the sales amount. Okay, there was no discount allowed in the income statement, so that is why that is zero. There was no bad debts, so that is why that amount is zero. Okay, and remember I said to you that we need to do an adjustment on the sales because in that sales amount, we have the credit sales and the cash sales. And we actually are interested only in the cash sales. So we need to take out the credit sales and we're going to do that by taking the debtors into account. Okay, and remember the debtors is entered under trade and other receivables in the balance sheet okay let me just get back to the balance sheet i just want to show you okay let's first do it this way okay um i said we're going to add the 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 trade and other receivables at the beginning of the year all right where do we get that in the balance sheet i just want to get that balance sheet out okay so here is my balance sheet trade and other receivables the beginning of the year the end of the year okay so the beginning of the year, it was 16,900, 16,900 the beginning of the year. At the end of the year, trade and other receivables was 4,700, 4,700, you see it there. Okay, so we're going to deduct the trade and other receivables at the end of the year. That is why the brackets, the reason for the brackets. Okay, and then we said we are going to add other income. And other, other, under other income, we said we're going to add like interest, interest received, interest on overdue debtors, rent received, commission received, etc. All other income except, remember, except we are not going to add the profit on sale of tangible assets. We're not going to add the profit there because I've explained to you in the previous lesson why we're not going to add it there. Okay, so other income is 12,900. Where did I get that amount from? From my income statement. 
um, other income, interest income, 12,900. 12,900. Is that 12,900? Okay. And then we just add all the amounts. We just added the sales is 700,000. Then 6,900. We add that. Deduct the 4,700. And add the other income. And then you'll see we get an amount of 75,100, which was the cash received from customers. Cash received from customers. Let me just get to that. Um, this is the, the, the cash flow statement. So I've started here. Cash received from customers, 75,100, 75,100. Okay. Now we're gonna, going to calculate the cash paid to suppliers and employees. How do we do that? We want to, remember I said to you, we want to know or work out what was the stock that was purchased because that was cash that we paid. Was It was for stock. But the stock, okay, so we're first going to work out what was the stock purchased and then we are going to correct that amount by taking the trade and other receivables, which actually includes the creditors, we're going to take that into account. So the first, we're first going to calculate the total stock purchase, which will consist of, um, of credit purchases and also cash purchases. All right. If you think back of the previous lesson, I've explained that, or I think it was in the first part of the, of the lesson, where we said, okay, what, how are we going to calculate, work out that amount? We're going to take the cost of sales. Where do we get that? From the income statement. Okay, let's go back to income statement. There is the cost of sales, the 500,000. There is the 500,000. Okay. We add the closing stock. Where do we get the closing stock? In the balance sheet. Balance sheet and the inventories. This was the closing stock, the 40,000. This is where we got the 40,000 from. And we're going to deduct the opening stock, which is the 18,200. We deduct that. All right. And then if we make that calculation, we get to the stock purchased of 521,800. That's the 500 plus 40 less that gives you 521,800. Okay. And then we are going, okay, there was no discount. You see it's zero. There was no discount in the, in the income statement. So that is why that amount is zero. Then we, we have to take the trade and other payables into account. In other words, because that includes the creditors for the same reason as I explained about the debtors. All right. So what we're going to do, we're going to add the trade and other payables at the beginning of the year, which was 7,000. Again, we go back to the balance sheet. What was trade and other payables at the beginning of the year? Trade and other payables at the beginning of the year was 7,000. And we deduct trade and other payables at the end of the year, which is 17,900. We get it here from the balance sheet. And this, this was the trade and other payables at the end of the year. Okay. So then we get that amount. Okay, so that is why we deduct that. And then remember the other thing that we are going to add here, the other uh, um, is other payments or other expense. You can just see it as expenses as well. Other payments slash expenses. Water and electricity, stationary wages. Remember, not depreciation, not interest on borrowed money, or not any, not no loss on sale of tangible assets. Only these other expenses. Where do we get that? We get that in the income statement under expenses. So I got it here on, under operating expenses. Water and electricity. Um, where is it? Water and electricity. 1,600, 1,600 there. Wages, 24,000. Wages, 24,000. Stationary, 300. 300. Depreciation and loss on sale of vehicles, those two are not added here because I've explained that in the previous lesson. Why we don't add depreciation and loss on sale of vehicles, it's those two are not added here under other payments. Okay, so there we get the other payments amount. It's the 1,600, 324,000 gives you other payments of 25,900.
All right. So if we take the stock purchased, which is 521,800, we add the 7,000, we deduct the 17,900, and we add the other payments, we get to 536,800. And that gives us the cash that was paid to suppliers and employees. 536,800. Okay, let me just get back to my cash flow statement. Okay, yeah, you see. Okay, yeah, I've got it here. 536800. Okay, so I've got now I've got my cash received from customers and I've got my cash paid to suppliers and employees. All right. If I get if I add these two, I get 188300. Remember I said to you that interest paid which is interest on a loan um, is not added to other expenses, to the other expenses here. And the reason for that is, you can just have a look at think if you remember, we said interest on borrowed money needs to be written like on the cash flow or in the cash flow statement. On the We say like it needs to be on the face of the cash flow statement. So that is why we've got here interest on long-term loan. The 18,000 is you see here, it's on the face of the cash flow statement. So that the 18,000, we also got that from the income statement. Um, let me just find it. Interest expense, 18,000. Interest on long-term loan, 18,000. You will also get that under in the notes. I just want to show you the notes. I see here, interest expense, 18,000 here. So that is where we got that 18,000 to come from. Okay. And the other item that I said to you that we are going to deduct here from the, to get the cash of operating activities is drawings. So that 70,000 also comes from the balance sheet. If you look at the notes, it's supposed to be under notes. Let me just find that quickly. Um, Capital. Let me just get that note regarding the um, capital and other. Okay, yeah, I've got it here. All right, capital, uh, add net profit and all those, but you get the drawings here. You see here, the drawings was 70,000 for the year, and that is where we got the 70,000 come, where we got the 70,000 from. Drawings less 70,000. Okay, and that's. All the amounts that we're going to need to calculate the cash effects of oper operating activities or operations, if you want to put it that way. It is the calculation here. I've said that 725 plus, that less that 536, <coughs> sorry, 800, gives you 188,300. You deduct the interest on long-term loan because interest is an outflow of cash you pay you've paid that the interest so it's an outflow that's why it's got like a, a bracket so it means it's like a negative you deduct that and drawings also drawings is money that was an out it was an outflow of money out of the business so that is why we deduct that as well so if you take the 188300 less 18000 less 70000 you get to 100,300, which is the cash effects of operating activities, which is the first part of the cash flow statement. Okay, now let's get to the second part. I'm just going to take another cash flow statement here. Um, and I just want to show you the first part of it is exactly the same. You see that one cash effects of operating activities and this cash effect of operating activities, these two, these are exactly the same. You get cash effects of operating activities, 100,300, 100,300. So I'm just going to continue on this one for the, show you the complete cash flow statement. Okay. So the second part of the cash flow statement is cash effects of investing activities all right and i've already explained to you how to get to that but that, so i'm just going to show you where i got the amounts from 
Okay, the first one is purchase of fixed assets. Where are we going to get that amount? It's that 75,000. You see that 75,000. Where are we going to get that amount from? We will get that under the notes from the balance sheet. Um, you see, you know that notes, we explain to you everything about the assets, the fixed and tangible assets. Okay, you will see the additions at cost. That is what we paid for the, um, for the tangible assets during the year. Additions at cost, 75,000. You see here, 75,000, 75,000. And this is where we get the 75,000 from. It's in brackets because it was an outflow of cash. We paid for the cash, so it was 75,000. We got that from, from this note, the 75,000 here. Okay, so it's an outflow. So that is why it is in brackets. Then proceeds from sale of fixed assets. In other words, what did we get? The money that we received for the assets that we have sold. Okay, we won't get that amount straight away from the notes. Okay, so we need to make a small calculation to, to be able to calculate that 25,000. Um, that amount is, we get that from, we take the disposals at carrying value, which in other words, that is the, you know what is carrying value? That is the total cost less the accumulated depreciation on that, on the, on the um, assets. So that is the carrying value. So we take that, that was the, uh, you can also see it as the book value. The book value or carrying value is the same thing. It is the cost less the accumulated depreciation. So that was the book value or the carrying value of the assets that have been sold. So it is the 23,500. And then we're going to add the profit and we're going to subtract the loss on sale of assets. We're going to add profit to see what was the amount that we received for it. We're going to add profit. Where do we get the profit on the sale of assets? We get that from the income statement. Okay, let's go to the income statement. Um, profit on sale of equipment, 3,500. Okay, you can just, yeah, okay, it's, it's specifically say equipment there, it's fine. So we're going to take, it is the 23,500, okay, um, that was the, the, the carrying value. We're going to add the profit on sale of equipment. So it's going to be 23500 plus the profit less the loss. Okay, so it's plus 3500 less 2000 And you can do the calculation. You will get to an amount of 25000 So this is where we get that 25000 from. So it is the carrying value. In your notes plus your profit on sale of assets and less the loss on sale of assets or done if, if you specifically if you specify then it's loss on sale of equipment or loss on sale of vehicles or whatever the case might be all right so that is where we get the 25,000 okay investment placed where we get that amount from the investment placed okay let me just get back to that. Um, um, sorry, I just want to get that. Sorry, just a moment. I just want to get this. Okay, the investment placed. Okay, investment, you know, investments falls under the non current assets. Okay, so where are we going to get that amount from? Also from the balance sheet from our non-current assets because an investment is a non-current asset okay let's see twenty thousand. okay let's go to the balance sheet let's go to investments you see here we get that financial assets investments the investment was forty thousand the beginning of the year okay now it is sixty thousand in other words, there was a movement of 20,000 on that investment. It was 40,000, now it's 16. In other words, we paid, it was an outflow of cash into the investment account. All right, so that is why this amount is in brackets. 
it was uh, the investment was placed or it was increased the amount of the investment so it, it was an outflow of cash and that is why we've got the 20,000 here in brackets it is from this 40,000 that is it's now 60,000 in other words the investment increased with 20,000 so we paid it out of the business into the investment account but it was out of the business's bank account all right so that is why that amount is in brackets okay um sorry that 20,000 all right and then if we add these we add the purchase that's less than minus 75,000 plus 25,000 less 20,000 75 plus 25 less 20 gives you that 70,000 the cash effects of investing activities okay so that is where you, we get that amount from okay it's just the calculation of these okay and then the last part of the cash flow statement is cash effects of financing activities and remember we said that's got to do with a loan of our long-term loan <clears throat> it is have we made the loan in other words did money come into the business or did we pay back the loan in other words that was there outflow of cash out of the business okay now let's see what happened with this loan this loan we will find under long-term liabilities where is our long-term liabilities the balance in, in my balance sheet in the balance sheet long-term loan there is the long-term liability you see the long-term loan okay what was at the beginning of the year it was 120,000 okay the end of the year it's a hundred thousand so what does it mean we paid back at 20,000 it was 120 now it's 100 which means there was an outflow of cash we paid back 20,000 of that loan it was on 20 now it's 100 so we paid back so it's an outflow of cash so that is why this amount is written in brackets 20,000 it was an outflow of cash all right so that was the only movement in regarding the loan um, so that is the 20,000. Okay, so now we've got the three totals for the cash effects of operating activities, cash effects of investing activities, and cash effects of financing activities. Now, all we need to do is to add these three, to add these three and see what do we get. 100,300 less 70,000 because that was in a minus the the minus was amount was bigger than the plus amount if I can put it that way we add the we, we take 100 we and then deduct 70,000 deduct 20,000 and you will get an amount of 10,300 you can calculate it if you don't believe me you can, I'll just show you it is a hundred thousand three hundred less 70,000 less, what is it, 20,000. Okay, and there you are, it's 10,300. And that is after you've done that calculation. All right, now we let, let's go in. We're going to have a look now of what was the movement in cash from the beginning of the year to the end of the year, because that is what the whole purpose of the cash flow statement is. We want to know what was the movement in cash and we also want to have an explanation of where did the money come from and on what we spent the money. All right, where can we see what the cash was at the beginning of the year and what it, what it was at the end of the year? In the balance sheet. Okay, so now, now let's have a look at the balance sheet again. Okay, where is my um, money? It's under cash and cash equivalent under the current assets at the beginning of the year it was 10,900 at the end of the year it was 21,200 okay so let's see what the difference is what do you guess let's guess I guess no I'm just I'm just going to show you it was 21,200 less 10,900 and you see 10,300 exactly the same amount as what we got here when we've added these three amounts exactly the same amount and that 
that's the cash flow statement that is it let me quickly um, show it to you here in the, on the last page okay here it's just the, the the amount at the beginning of the year for the cash and cash equivalent the end of the year and the difference is 10,300 and that amount is exactly the same as the cash effects from operating activities plus the cash effects of investing activities plus the cash effects from financing activities and that equals the net change in cash and cash equivalents okay and that's it for today thank you very much see you next in the next lesson